It's certainly quite alarming to see the havoc, mayhem in our city, far beyond any peaceful protesting. It occurs regularly with the help of the race baiting and the incendiary reporting in the news media. And, of course, let's not forget the usual threats from foreign powers or terrorism. Let's not forget gang violence, crime, and scourge of drugs. We don't have to look too far to see the proliferation of deaths from overdoses right here in our own communities here. And what about the complete deterioration of cultural and social moral standards to the point where premarital sex is the norm, pornography is the biggest and most profitable sector of the internet, and we are routinely assaulted with pressure to give in to the LGBTQ agenda. If you espouse traditional Christian family values, you're some kind of flat or a bigot. Yes, little doubt that we're living in perilous times. It was at times like these, though, many years ago, that a song was written. It's a wonderful hymn written by a lady named Ruth K. Jones, and it is titled, In Times Like These. And probably if I had had the forethought when I had Tammy help with the bulletin, I would have given this message that title in times like these. You see, Ruth was a, a mother of five and the wife of a busy minister. She's from Pennsylvania. Shout out to the Commonwealth. And she had been reading 2 Timothy 3, 1, the verses that we touched on earlier. And this was at a, a low point during the Second World War. The Allies were bogged down in Italy. Casualties were mounting. Rationing was everywhere. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ruin the song for you by trying to sing it, but I want you to listen to the words from this wonderful piece. The first line says, In times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. And the chorus goes like this: This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. If we apply the words from that lovely song to our Bible text from this morning, I think there's four, four truths that we're gonna find. First, in times like these, you need a savior. Why? Why do you need a savior? Why do you need Jesus? Well. First, because without Jesus, you're a sinner. Simply put, you are guilty before a righteous and holy God. Romans 3.23 states, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You are a sinner. It is an undeniable fact. And God cannot allow sin into his presence. Secondly, we all need a Savior because of God's judgment. John 3.36 says, he who believes in the Son has everlasting life, but he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. There it is, pretty cut and dry, right? Either you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior and you have eternal life, or you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so God's wrath is laid up in store for you. You will face his eternal life. Third, we need a Savior because the final destination for those who are unsaved is hell. John says in Revelations 20, verses 14 to 15, where he has a vision of the judgment for those who have not received Jesus as their Savior, it says, And then death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So let me ask you this question. I'll put it to you bluntly. If tomorrow never comes for you, for whatever reason, whether it's a virus, car accident, heart failure, if tomorrow doesn't come for you, do you have the blessed assurance of knowing where you will spend eternity when you die? Thank God that a Savior has been provided to us to save us from our sins. Thank God that Jesus Christ came to earth, died on the cross for your sins and for mine. 
And the Bible tells us over and over that if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God forgives our sins. We have a Savior. But if you've never done that, if you've never made that commitment, I would encourage you to do so today. Don't wait. Don't put it off. Tomorrow isn't promised. The second truth is that in times like these, you need security. Let's listen to the line in the hymn that says, In times like these, you need an anchor. I grew up around small sailing boats, and it's a boat's anchor that provides security to the boat and their crew. Even when winds are raging and howling and the seas get high and rough, an anchor holding safe and solid provides the ship with security. So, where do we find security in this perilous world, in this perilous time? Kind of a rhetorical question, isn't it? If we stop and think about it, nothing in this world is secure. Not our health, not our jobs or finances. We've seen how quickly that can change, haven't we? Plain truth is that this world offers nothing secure. But in Jesus, you have security if he's your Savior. You have the security of his presence, not just temporarily, but forever, forever. One of my favorite passages of scripture comes at the end of Matthew's gospel. Verse 28, 20, where Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. And then the author of Hebrews reiterates this later as he quotes Jesus in Hebrews 13, 5, saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus. When you have him as your savior, you have security of knowing that he is with you, your help and guide through whatever trials and troubles might come your way. You also have the security of never having to fear God's judgment. Jesus gives us this promise again in John's Gospel, 1028. And he says, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You don't have to fear the eternal damnation for those who are lost when you have Jesus. He promises that you won't perish in hell and no one, no one and nothing in the entire universe can take you out of his strong hand. The hands that hold the stars, the sun, the moon, the planets, those same strong hands hold each and every one of us, don't they? Also, we have the security of God's eternal love. He loves you. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul's words written in Romans 8, 38, 39. The greatest security that we can have is to know that no matter what happens in this world, right, no matter who's president come January, no matter what happens with the economy, regardless of whether the virus spikes, no one and no thing can ever separate you from God's love. Folks, our joy should not depend on who is president. Our joy should not depend on whether the stock market is bullish or bearish. It should not depend on anything that's going on in the news. Christians have thrived both in good times and bad times. They have found hope and comfort in Jesus Christ, whether they're living in democracies, in communist dictatorships, or repressive Muslim regimes. Some of the greatest Christian movements grew out of the midst of famines and wars and plagues. And the promises of God are just as valid in times of pandemic, wars, natural disaster, or economic depression. In times like these, Jesus offers security for our hearts. We can find comfort and joy in Jesus if we turn off that TV for a little while and refocus on God by spending time in prayer and in reading his word. And this leads me to the third truth. In times like these, you need the scriptures. 
The second verse of our hymn begins, in times like these, you need the Bible. Brother, do we need the Bible today? We need the Bible to understand our times. People ask, are these the last days? Are we in the end times, right? Because of all the craziness that seems to be going on. I'm not going to I'm not going to speculate on that, okay? That's not what this is about, because the Bible's very clear. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Only God knows when the end will be. But we can confidently say that we're closer to that now than we were 50 years ago. And as I often said to the Bible study group, we're closer today than we were yesterday. Listen again to part of the passage that we read earlier. And I want you to hear the description that Paul gives of those last days. Okay. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. What's that sound like to you? We need the scriptures. We need the scriptures to understand not only what's going on in our world, but what we should do about it. We need the Bible to raise our children. In this day and age, when almost every aspect of our lives, education, entertainment, even our government conspires to undermine your authority as a parent. The assault to secularize our children is real. It's real. And it leads to nothing but confusion and destruction if they follow that path. Jesus refers to Satan as a thief. In John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Satan is real. Satan wants to steal from your children and destroy them. It's only when we bring them to Jesus, as we found in the Bible, that they can have life and have it more abundantly. When our children find Jesus and learn the scriptures themselves, they find true freedom. Not freedom that Satan and the world offers, but the freedom of salvation. We also need the Bible to reach others, to fulfill the Great Commission, spreading the gospel message throughout the world. Romans 10, 17 tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So by teaching others the truths found in the Bible, people in our community can be saved. In times like these, let's go to the Bible. In times like these, as never before, let's get into God's word. Finally, in times like these, we need service. The second line of the second verse of our hymn says this. In times like these, oh, be not idle. When there's trouble and peril in our world, that's the most important time for God's people to be at work doing everything we can to reach people for Christ, getting them saved. Surely, as we look at the state of our world today, we should be giving the Lord all of our hearts as never before. I think of the words of the late Dr. John Walbert, and they're more relevant, I believe, today than ever when he said this, quote, now is the time for Christians to face the task of evangelism, prayer, devotion, and service. All of these are pressed upon us urgently by our present world situation words I don't think have been spoken. I pray that God helps us in these perilous times in which we find ourselves, that we don't lose heart, not to become discouraged, not to be fearful, not to be lazy, idle, indifferent, or apathetic. Each passing day brings greater peril to our sin-sickened world. And yet, each passing day also provides us with greater opportunities for service and brings us one day closer to 
the return of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we are in perilous times. In such times, you need a Savior. Have you met him? Is he your Lord and Master? If not, make today the day. In times like these, you need security. Security. Jesus, the ultimate security. Go to him as your anchor in the storms of this turbulent world. Times like these, you need the scripture. I can't say it any better than the anonymous author of a poem entitled My, This Old Book. It goes like this. Though the cover is worn, and the pages are torn, and though places bear traces of tears, yet more precious than gold is the book worn and old that can shatter and scatter my fears. This old book is my God. Tis a friend by my side. It will lighten and brighten my way, and each promise I find soothes and gladdens my mind as I read it and heed it each day. To this book I will cling. Of its worth I will sing. Though great losses and crosses be mine, for I cannot despair, though surrounded by care, while possessing this blessing divine. Friends, the word of God, it is a blessing. But it doesn't do us any good if we just sit it on our coffee table. Right? We need to be in it, reading it, learning it, applying its truths to our lives. In times like these, you also need service. Indeed, the world needs your service. The church needs your service, but most importantly, you need to serve. It's by service to God and to others that we grow as a Christian, and we know the joy of being used by God. We were created by God for purposes, given certain gifts and talents, each and every one of us, and when we use them in the service, it's an incredible, incredible joy. And it's in serving others that we become the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. This pandemic has led to unprecedented isolation, loneliness, depression. What an opportunity for us to be a blessing to those who need hope. By being a friend to someone who's lonely, by giving an encouraging word to the downhearted, by pointing people to Jesus and to his word. May God strengthen us this, in this time to serve him. The final verse of the hymn goes, In times like these, I have a Savior. In times like these, I have an anchor. I'm very sure, I'm very sure, my anchor holds and grips a solid rock. Let this be our prayer of affirmation today. In times like these, let's turn to our loving Savior, offers security and certainty for eternity. Let's partake in his scriptures and in his service as never before. And by doing so, we bring light to a sin-darkened world. We bring a message of hope in these perilous times. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, Lord, as we consider the words written by Paul, we consider the words of that precious old hymn. We look around us, and we don't have to look far to see the perils, the hazards, the dangers in the world and the times in which we live. Father, I pray for each one of us gathered here today that we will consider it. We'll accept the challenge. We won't hide it and cower in fear, but we will be emboldened and strengthened by your Holy Spirit to seek you regularly, to read and study your scriptures and apply them and go forth and serve you in new and glorious ways, Father, that we bring that gospel message to our hurting world. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We return to our hymnals, to our final hymn, and then I would remind you, of course, I'll after that, we'll uh, pronounce the benediction, and I would encourage you to simply make your exit and not to uh, congregate, please, in the vestibule in accordance with our COVID procedures. And you can certainly, it's a beautiful day, so you can talk out in the uh,